Hi, Matthew here. I'm going to talk you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. It's challenging, but hopefully with my help, you'll be able to understand and answer the question. So let's get started. Question seven, which is a 50 mark question on the line and trigonometry. So question seven, part A, tells us that the locations of three towns, Abbeville, Blakestown and Cravenswell, are positioned relative to each other as shown on the diagram. So then we'll have a look at question seven, part A, and this is worth 10 marks. So it wants us to find the angle ABC without measuring. So to do that, we're gonna to need to find the slope of BA and BC. So first of all, we need to work out the slope of the line AB and the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and this is on page 18 of your formula and tables book. So our coordinate a is 2, 2, and b is 4, 8. So we're going to label now x1, y1, x2, y2. So 2, 2 is x1, y1, and 4, 8 is x2, y2. So then the slope of ab is equal to 8 minus 2 over 4 minus 2. So then we're going to call the slope of ab m1. So the slope of ab, so m1, is going to be equal to 8 minus 2 over 4 minus 2. And 8 minus 2 is 6 over 4 minus 2, so 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. And now we have to work out the slope of bc. So b again is 4, 8, and c is 10, 2. So this time x1, y1 is 4, 8, and x2, y2 is 10, 2. So then the slope of bc I'm going to call m2, and m2 is going to be equal to 2 minus 8 over 10 minus 4 and 2 minus 8 is minus 6 so minus 6 over 10 minus 4 and 10 minus 4 is 6 so minus 6 over 6 is minus 1. So now that I have m1 and m2 I can use my formula for the angle between two slopes. So it's this formula right here on page 19 so tan theta is equal to plus minus m1 minus m2 over 1 plus m1 m2 so or m1 is 3 so it's going to be 3 minus m2 so 3 minus minus 1. It's important now that you have minus and then minus 1 as there's a difference between 3 minus 1 and 3 minus minus 1. And that's going to be over 1 plus m1 times by m2 so it's going to be over 1 plus 3 by minus 1. Now we know it's in the first quadrant which means it has to be positive so we're going to take the absolute value so I know in the formula it says plus minus however here we don't need the plus minus we're going to take the absolute value of it. So now we're going to evaluate the right hand side and then we get tan theta is equal to so 3 minus minus 1 is the same as 3 plus 1 so it's going to be 4 over and then 1 plus 3 by minus 1 so 3 by minus 1 is minus 3 so 1 minus 3 and that's minus 2 and remember it's the absolute value of that so 4 over minus 2 is minus 2 so tan theta is equal to the absolute value of minus 2 and the absolute value of minus 2 is just 2 so therefore tan theta is equal to 2 so now I'm going to do theta is equal to tan inverse of 2 and this will give me my answer for theta so therefore theta is equal to 63.43494882 correct to one decimal place theta is equal to 63.4 degrees so that's my angle ABC, 63.4 degrees. So now we're going to have a look at A part 2, and this is worth 10 marks as well. So we're told that a telecoms phone company want to put up a mobile phone mast at a position that is equidistant from each of the three towns. Using the diagram below, construct the position where the mobile phone mast should be placed. We also have to show all construction lines clearly. So in other words, it's asking us to find the circumcenter of the triangle and at the circumcenter, there'll be the same distance between that point and A, B and C. So to do this, we need to find the perpendicular bisector of two of the lines, then the point of intersection between both the perpendicular bisectors will be the circumcenter. So to bisect a line, you can watch Sean's videos. So we should bisect the line A, B, then draw in that perpendicular bisector, do the same thing with the line A, C and the place where they meet will be the circumcenter. So your constructions should look something like that. And then this point here will be the circumcenter and that will be the position where the mobile phone mast should be placed. So that's our answer for A part two. And now we're gonna have a look at A part three and this is worth 15 marks. So as I said at the start of the previous part to the question, the point we found is known as the circumcenter of the triangle. So now we have to use a mathematical method apart from the construction that we've done in part two to find the exact coordinates of the position where the phone mast should be placed. So basically we can't use constructions, we have to use a different mathematical method. So think of it, we found two perpendicular bisectors and then the point of intersection between both of these bisectors. So I'm going to find the equations of the two bisectors and then using simultaneous equations solve for x and y to find their point of intersection. So just a reminder, the formula for the equation of a line, which is on page 18 of your formula tables book, is y minus y1 is equal to m times by x minus x1. So basically we need to find the slope and then a point on the line. So we need to find the slope of the perpendicular bisector and then a point on the perpendicular bisector. So to find the point on the perpendicular bisector all we need is the midpoint of both lines as if you find the midpoint of the line the bisector will have to pass through the midpoint and the slope of the perpendicular bisector is going to be perpendicular with the slope of the line AC and perpendicular with the line AB. So that's how we're going to find our equations. So the first equation that we're going to work out is the equation of the line 
that's the perpendicular bisector of AC. So the perpendicular bisector of AC is a special case as it's a straight line, straight vertically up through the x-axis. So that means that the equation is just going to be x equal to 6, as we can't work out the slope of a vertical line. So now we're going to work out the perpendicular bisector of AB and find the equation of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the midpoint of AB. And we have a formula for the midpoint of a line on page 18 of our formula and tables book. And it's this third formula down on the page here. So x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So our coordinates are a, 2, 2 and b, 4, 8. So we're going to label 2, 2 as x1, y1 and 4, 8 as x2, y2. So the midpoint then of a, b is going to be 2 plus 4 divided by 2 and 2 plus 8 divided by 2. So 2 plus 4 is 6 and 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then 2 plus 8 is obviously 10 and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So therefore we found a point on the perpendicular bisector of AB. That's the point 3, 5. So now we'd work out the slope of the line that's perpendicular with it. So we're going to work out the slope of AB and then find the slope of the line's perpendicular with that. So we know from A part 1 the formula for the slope. So the slope is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 so 8 minus 2 over x2 minus x1 so 4 minus 2. So 8 minus 2 is 6 over 4 minus 2 which is 2. That's going to be a slope of 3. So be careful that's the slope of the line AB. So now we have to work out the slope of the line that's perpendicular with AB. So 3 is the same as 3 over 1. So to find the line that's perpendicular with that, you flip the fraction and then change it from either positive to negative or negative to positive. So I'm going to flip the fraction to be 1 over 3. Then it was positive, so now it's negative. So the slope of the perpendicular bisector of AB is minus 1 over 3. So now I have my x1, y1 and m. To pop these into the formula for the equation of a line to work out the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. So x1, y1 is 3, 5 and m is minus 1 over 3. So therefore the equation of the line is y minus 5 is equal to minus 1 over 3 times by x minus 3. So now multiplying this out I get y minus 5 is equal to minus x over 3 plus 1. And I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 3 to get rid of the fraction which gives me 3y minus 15 is equal to minus x plus 3. But I want the x to be positive so I'm going to plus x minus 3 on both sides and this will give me x plus 3y minus 18 is equal to 0. So that's the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. So now we find the point of intersection between that and x equal to 6. So we know that x is equal to 6 in the point of intersection so therefore we're going to put 6 in for x and work out the value for y. So that's going to be 6 plus 3y minus 18 is equal to 0 which gives us 3y minus 12 is equal to 0 or 3y is equal to 12. So dividing both sides by 3 we get y is equal to 4. So therefore we found the coordinate of the circumcenter which is 6, 4 and that's your answer for a part 3. So now we're going to move on to part b of the question and this is worth 15 marks. So we're told that the mobile phone mast from part a will have a square base with side length 18 meters. The angle of elevation from one of the corners of the base to the highest point on the mast is 63 degrees and we have to work out the vertical height of the mast correct to the nearest meter. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to work out the distance between one of the corners of the base to the centre of the mast and we're told that the mast has a square base so let's draw that out. So that's the square base of our mast there. So we know that each side is 18 meters and we know that the center of the mast is somewhere around here. So we need to work out the distance now between each of the corners and the center of the mast. So I'm going to label the distance between the corner of the base of the mast to the center of the mast as x. So now you might see here that we have a right angled triangle which I've marked out in purple there. So we know that in a right angled triangle we can use Pythagoras' theorem which says that the hypotenuse squared will be equal to the square of both of the other sides added together. So in our case here it's going to be 2x squared is equal to 18 squared plus 18 squared. So now we can solve for x and this will give us the distance between the center of the mast to the corner of the base of the mast. So 2x squared is 4x squared and 18 squared is 324. So we get 324 plus 324. So that gives us 4x squared is equal to 648. So now dividing both sides by 4 and we get x squared is equal to 162. So now we need to get the square root of that to get rid of the x squared and the square root of 162 is 9 squared to 2. So therefore x is equal to 9 square root of 2. So now we'll be able to work out the vertical height of the mast. So the mast will look something like this with this side being the height and we know that the angle of elevation is 63 degrees and we know that the distance between the mast and the corner of the base of the mast is going to be 9 square root of 2. So now we can use our trigonometric ratios here to work out what the height is. So remember we have a right angle triangle and the side across from the 90 degrees in a right angle triangle will be the hypotenuse which I'm going to label as H. The side across from the angle will be the opposite which I'm going to label as O and then the third side will be the adjacent side which I'm going to label as A. So now we've worked out which sides are O, A and H. We can figure out which trigonometric ratio to use. So we have the adjacent side 9 square root of 2 which means that we're going to use that and then the variable that we have to work out is the height which is the opposite. So it's O and A and the opposite and adjacent so that's going to be tan as tan theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So in our case 
space here that's going to be tan 63 is equal to the height over 9 square root of 2. And now to get rid of the fraction on the right hand side, I'm going to multiply both sides by 9 square root of 2. So on the left hand side, I'll get 9 square root of 2 tan 63. And then the 9 square root of 2 will cancel with the 9 square root of 2 on the right hand side. So that'll be equal to just the height. So now we can work out what this is on our calculator. So 9 square root of 2 tan 63 is equal to 24.97995355. And to correct to the nearest meter, that's equal to 25 meters. So therefore, the height is equal to 25 meters. So that's our answer for part B of the question, the final part of the question, and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.